Bonjour tout le monde. Good afternoon everyone. We're here in the we're walking because it was nice weather. So we are here sitting down. We're connecting the Wi-Fi of nature. So now the children are playing. No no Areta. Now here is my question. Go here. Go here because I, you know, with the. Je the suis figure. Friend figure, but you, you have the the sunglasses. It's okay. So now my no. question. My question is, how do you understand the wilderness in the book of Revelation concerning the the woman was brought in the wilderness and it was nourished by Elohim there. But this is spiritual then. matter. This is a spiritual matter. Okay. Uh, wilderness. The wilderness is, is related to the book of Bat Midbar. Bat Midbar. Midbar means just pasture. So it's not a wilderness like we understand in our Western mindset. Okay. Wilderness with a, like a desert. The wilderness is a place where you, where the, the shepherd grow their, their flock to grass. It's a place where there is a natural food given by Elohim. So when, when, when you read that in the, in the book of Revelation, you can see that Jehovah is a provider for his people. No matter what the people say, there are a lot of uh, interpretation in the, in the world, but you have to look that uh, if we relate in the scripture, in particular in the Tanakh, there is promise for the people of Elohim to be protected. So, the wilderness is not like we imagine a, a deserted place. It is a place where we will be fed by Elohim. So, in the time of trouble, he will yeah, read the Psalm 91. He says, it, it is written, that he will call upon me, I will answer him. I will be within him in time of trouble, I will deliver him and show him my salvation. This is what is written in the Psalm 91. And uh, there is a promise to, of protection in the same Psalm. When you read uh, 1,000 on your side, a myriad, myriad on your right hand, but he shall not uh, approach to you. You will only peer with your eyes the punishment of the wicked. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what we are going through now. And it's very difficult to speak about people in the term of wicked. But wickedness must be determined in the, in the term of Torah, not in the term of what we think in the world, in the Greek mindset or the Western mindset. Wickedness in the Torah according to the book of Galatians explained by Shaul, is all those who are, the, who, have, who are not in the Torah to walk according to the standard of the world or the Christianity to say, oh, I love Jesus and uh, uh, he's my savior and so on, is not what, what the scriptures say. Apart from the Torah, there is no salvation, even for those who claim Jesus. There is no salvation, not only for Christians, but all those who uh, pretend and do not keep. The Torah is a, is a, is a covenant between uh, the creator of the universe, Yehovah Sebahot, and his people. His people. To be his people, we need to enter into the covenant. We enter into the covenant through Yeshua. Okay? But Yeshua means that we, we walk in the covenant. To walk in the covenant is to, to walk in the Torah. The Torah is a covenant. So if we walk in the covenant, we don't have to worry about what is tomorrow. Because the provider is not man, the provider is Elohim. Yeah. So we have to just to walk in this emuna, this uh, trusting relationship, like uh, it was with Abraham, like it was with Israel, like it was with Yaakov, and so many others who put their trust in Yehovah, not in man. Mm. Hebrew so, 11. Yeah, we have, to, we have to, to look at that and not to see the, the, the wilderness like an empty place where we'll be to, uh, totally in the desert. The spiritual, yeah, because... the spiritual matters is something that uh, Elohim is able to hide his people even in the midst of other people. You understand? He's able to blindfold people that they will not take mention of you. So that is the most important. Mm. Where do you want to run? Where do you want to run? To hide somewhere? Now with, uh, with all the instruments they have, with the drone, with the, you know, all the technology they have, you cannot hide. Yeah. It's impossible to hide. So the holy place, it is in the places under the wings of Elohim. Yeah. That's it. Our refuge, our fortress is Elohim. Yes, this is right. where we can hide. You see? Yeah. 
So this is what David say in the psalm, that he will hide in the place of Jehovah. So that's his Why wilderness. We can look at that. So as a place which is uh, to, to be fed mm -mm. by Elohim. And by the way, the book of Revelation is in the greatest part to be taken uh, in the spiritual level mm -hmm. and not in the literal level. So the literal level starts first and uh, has an influence on the, on the, lit uh, the uh, excuse me, the spiritual level has a, an impact mm -hmm. on, the, on the literal level. But too many people have tried to fit, to fix this uh, book into a literal, and many errors have come out because of this interpretation. So everyone must uh, interpret like he thinks it is good. Yeah. So being in the desert is uh, to be in a midbar, in a place where you are fed by Elohim. Hallelujah. Amen. So because uh, myself, I'm, what I'm thinking is. Um, it's like a wilderness, you know. Um, you, well, for example, in the place where we are isolated, like that, yeah. and you have your own garden, you know, you have place you can, you know, self-sufficient, like that. Yeah, it is also it's uh, self-sufficient, but it is in relation always with the Torah. It's always in relation with the Torah. Because uh, Elohim is able to give favors and people, but, and to send people cross your ways who will help you. You know, so we, we, we don't have to see that uh, the, the wilderness of life, you have to a different form of wilderness. Here you take the example from, uh, from the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. But if you take the book in the first century, the, the wilderness is when you live, when you live your worldly life, the, the day you turn to Yeshua, to follow Yeshua, because to believe in Yeshua, according to the scripture, is to walk in the Torah. So the day we turn to the Torah, we we'll believe. We say we believe in Yeshua. We follow Him. He is uh, there to show us the way, because He said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life." So we have to follow Him, and it is in the Torah. So in this moment, we are delivered from from uh, Mitzrayim, which is Egypt, okay, which means oppression, bondage of the world. This is not a material bondage; it's a spiritual bondage. It's not a material bondage. Because we are living in this world, but we are delivered from the power of sin, we are delivered to the system of the world, and we follow Yeshua. This is what does it mean? It is a spiritual matter. We are not escaping the world, we are living in this world. And as long as the world exists so, we will be in this world. And when Yeshua comes back, then he will establish uh, uh, the kingdom of Elohim. Mm -hmm. And this will be another rule. Nothing will disappear. So, when Yeshua comes, the world will keep going. But with new condition, new condition which will be ruled by the master in in Jerusalem. Yeah. So Yeshua, so he will he will establish a kingdom. Yeah, because Abraham he have not seen yet the promise. No, and he, he will come. He will come. This is what the sages of old said. How do we know? How do we know that there will be uh, that the Messiah will come? Because Elohim must make promise to Abraham, it's like Yaakov. Yeah. They don't have seen the promises. No, no, not yet. So now he has to raise them from the, from the dead in order to show them that he fulfilled his promise. He bound himself. He vowed himself. Uh, Elohim vowed himself to Abraham, his friend. Mm -hmm. So he will fulfill what he has promised. We are the so last generation. We are the, the last generation that we believe. Okay, so don't worry. It's not, it will not take too much before the coming of the Mashiach. Yeah. We have to wait for it and to trust it. Because the others are also, um, you know, many, of course, it's good to go in somewhere. And, you know, if you have no money, you yeah, know, it's, it's, you are living, you know, some you're people, they will, Some people will tell you, oh, you have to buy a ton of groceries, you know, and those who have no money to buy. Are not they, not are they... ton of groceries, for example. No, no, you just give that, that, this example. People will tell you, oh, you have to buy, you know, uh, 20 kilo from that, 50 kilo from, but if you don't have money to buy, okay, Elohim will not look at you because you don't have the money, so he cannot feed you. No, that's yeah, nonsense. Yeah, yeah. That's no, totally no, no, nonsense. To, to, be, to be for survival like that, you know. We will see, we will see. Okay? Because uh, we cannot say it is everybody, really everybody uh, mo, uh, not all can go to the, to the, the countryside mm -hmm. to have their own place there mm -hmm. and to plant, you know, gardening, mm -hmm. you know. We we see with our eyes the punishment of the wicked. That is the point. Okay. okay. So we don't have to worry about the the, the situation. Wariness is not from Elohim. From Elohim. Eh?
Okay. We worry for those who have not uh, seen Yeshua. But we don't worry for ourselves. We worry for those who have not seen Yeshua. Yeah. These people do not realize that their life is at stake. Yeah. Because they are lost in this world. Mm. And they think maybe they are in a better place because they have money. But money to bring you nowhere. Nowhere. When you leave this world, it's not only money who follow you. Okay? Mm. So we have to think about that. Yeah. So we have many, many examples. Yeshua spoke about that, about the treasure. The treasure is not in, we have to put our treasure in heaven. In heaven. Okay, and not, not to store up in this world. In this world there is nothing. If we don't understand that, and then we're in the wrong place. Let the riches take part in the blessing of the poor. That is how it is. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Blessed for the... Thank you Amen. for the interview, my dear. Amen. You're welcome. <laughs> Next time. Uh, next time.